The big story at the beginning of the year was seemingly unending snow in the Northeast in New England. First, there was the so-called blizzard of 2015 that threatened to drop massive snow on millions at the end of January. And the snow came. And the wind blew. And for most in the storm's path, the predictions were verified. But one city dodged a bullet. Even as towns all across Long Island were hammered with high wind and drifting snow, New York City was spared the crippling piles of snow. But then Boston was hit with storm after storm. Somewhat used to the cold, but like not this kind of cold, not the snow, the ice, just like not my kind of party. The city did an incredible job keeping traffic and trains rolling, even as they struggled with what ended up being the biggest seasonal snowfall on record, 108.6 inches of snow. Then for the most part, spring in the U.S. was calmer than average with less severe weather than we would expect. By the end of March, there had only been five confirmed tornadoes. In April, one of the biggest tornadoes of the spring was a massive EF4 wedge tornado that struck the tiny community of Fairdale, Illinois, 14 miles from Rockford. First responders searched for victims through the night amongst the piles of debris that had once been beautiful homes. And when the sun came up, the rescue efforts continued. And they're gonna continue throughout the day. Uh, right now, as you can imagine, lots of challenges, a lot of safety issues. The damage was incredible, and although two people were lost here, Fairdale resident Susan Meyer survived the tornado that destroyed her house. I started to go downstairs to the first floor when the windows blew in. It passed within about 30 seconds. It was, it was very quick, and I had a two-story house. Uh, the roof and the upper floor were in the, on the first floor <laughs> in the living room. And then May gave us the first named tropical storm of the season. Two weeks before the season's official start on June 1st, Tropical Storm Anna made a beeline for Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Also in May, Texas was devastated by deadly flooding with towns like Wimberley seeing a record river rise on the Blanco, sending a 40-foot wall of water through the area. It killed eight members of a single family when it washed their house off its stilts. In Wichita Falls, Texas, citizens prepared for a 500-year flood that luckily didn't happen. Then, just a couple of weeks later, Tropical Storm Bill made landfall in Texas, and along with coastal flooding, the storm brought more record rainfall and flooding through Texas and Oklahoma as it continued through the middle of the country. Then a huge weather newsmaker in October brought historic flooding to South Carolina, made worse by the influence of Hurricane Joaquin that luckily stayed off the coast. And in some of the saddest news of the entire year, one tornado outbreak destroyed homes and lives in Mississippi just two days before Christmas, while another system swept through Texas on the day after Christmas. Oh my gosh, it's huge. Leaving 11 dead and hundreds of homes damaged or destroyed in its wake. And now as we prepare to ring in 2016, Missouri and Illinois are preparing for record flooding there, where more than a dozen people have already lost their lives since last week. Most of those were preventable, resulting from drivers driving into floodwaters. And as this wild weather year ends, we remind you to stay weather aware and heed all warnings from official sources. For Weather Nation, I'm John Van Pelt.